When we're working in After Effects, we arguably spend most of our time in the Timeline panel. And because of that, it can also be the place where we waste the most time if we don't work efficiently and stay organized. So in this section, we're going to take a look at some of my favorite tips and techniques and best practices when working with layers. And the first thing we're going to touch on is organization. And just as we saw with the project panel how important it is to stay organized, it's probably even more important to stay organized in the timeline panel. Having an organized timeline panel not only saves you time as you work, but it can also minimize any potential mistakes that you might make. And I've got an example here of a real world disorganized timeline panel. This is actually from a project that I had to pick up. I was the fourth designer to work on this project. And when I got to it, this is exactly how the timeline looked. You can see some layers are named, some layers aren't named. There's no sense of organization with the different colors. You've got layers that have their visibility switched off and it's okay to have layers that are switched off. But the danger is that if I pick up this project and I turn one of those layers on accidentally and forget to turn it off, then the final render might not look how it's supposed to look. So what you want to do with layers that are in the comp but turned off is lock them and make them shy. And we'll look at that in a moment. So this is basically a mess and I have to spend some time up front before I can even get started on the project, just working out what's going on. So if you're leaving your projects like this, you're not doing yourself any favors, especially if you have to pick up the project at a later time and try and work out what you did, but you're also not doing anybody else who has to pick up your project any favors either. So let's close this one down and I'm gonna open up a different composition. Now this one isn't quite as disorganized as that one, but it's got a bunch of things that could definitely be a little better organized. So let's go through this and reorganize it to make it more efficient. So the first thing I want to do in here is I want to name my adjustment layers. You can see number one here is camera lens blur. So I'm going to press shift control Y that's shift command Y on the Mac. I'm going to name that camera lens blur. I like to have it where there's no spaces between the letters and I have capitals for each word. That's just my naming convention. Okay, what's the next one? This has the curves effect on it. Shift control Y, curves. And obviously you really need to do this as you work. You're just not gonna go back, especially at the end of a really big project and tidy things up. You're just gonna move on to the next project. So the next one is vignette. This is CC vignette, but I'm just gonna type in vignette. Okay, so there's a camera, camera one's fine. What have we got here? We've got a deep orange solid. If I just press UU, I can see what's happening on this one. I've got a mask and it's got the overlay blend mode. So this is also a vignette. It's a solid, so I'm gonna rename that vignette as well. Now there's a null object. Now what's the null object doing? You can see it's acting as the parent for all of these shape layers. So I'll just press UU again on the keyboard to see what's going on there. It's been scaled up, position's been modified slightly, but I'm gonna name this one scale control. Okay. And we've got all of these shape layers and these are all these dials. You can see there's so many of them that make up this background. And it's pretty logical that you would pre-compose these. So I'd need to pre-compose these with the null object, the scale controller. I'm gonna come down here and select them. Now, obviously they're all different colors, so I'm gonna give these a color, just make them red. Shift control C, and I'm gonna call these dials base. Now, as you can see, it doesn't look the same as it did when these weren't pre-composed. Let's just go back into dial space. And you can see that each of these shape layers has the screen blend mode. Shift escape to go back to the main comp. And in order for me to be able to see those blend modes in this comp, I have to collapse the transformation. So I'm just going to click on this button here. And that will collapse those transformations and we'll see those blend modes in the main comp. Okay, so pre-composing all of those layers has done two things. It's allowed us to use this dials base composition 
throughout the project in other places. And obviously if we make a change to the dials base, it's going to update globally wherever it's used throughout the project. And also it keeps this timeline much more organized. Okay, so I've got some clouds footage here. This is this clouds you can see in the background. Let me just solo that. And I'm going to pre-compose that. I'm going to leave all the attributes for that one. I'm going to name that clouds. And below that we have this deep yellow solid layer. Now this is switched off. And if I picked up this project that belongs to somebody else, I have no idea whether this is being used as I mentioned earlier. So the best thing to do, rather than delete it just in case it's needed, best thing to do is lock it, make it shy, and then enable shy layers. So that way we've still got it there if we need it. You can see it goes eight to 10 and nine is hidden. It's still there if we need it, just in case. And lastly, I have a gradient ramp in the background. So I'm gonna name that gradient ramp. Okay, so now if you picked up this project and you open this composition, you can see exactly what's going on. I could probably change the colors of some of these. So adjustment layers, I could make say yellow, solids, I could make aqua, pre-comps, they could stay red, text could be lavender, doesn't really matter as long as there's some sort of organization and camera could be none. And if you've set labels up correctly, you can use them to your advantage. If I right click, I can choose select label group and that will select all of my adjustment layers. So it isn't just for visual reference, you can use it to save time when you're selecting layers. And once again, I can't stress how important it is to do this as you go. If you make a new solid, name the solid. If you make a new adjustment layer, name the adjustment layer. It only takes a fraction of a second and anyone who works with your projects will thank you as well. Okay, so now that I've tidied this up, I just wanna take a few moments to make this look a little more interesting. And I'm gonna use dials base as a fill for the dials text layer. So I'm gonna bring that up the top and I'm gonna choose for the dials base, alpha matte dials. Okay, so you can see that my dials go black and white again. And of course we've collapsed the transformations on this layer. So let me just uncollapse those. And now I get the option to choose a blend mode. So I can choose screen, for example. So that's one way of doing it. But if I wanted to keep the transformations collapsed, as you can see when I uncollapse them, the position of my dials changed. There's a little trick. If you wanna get access to blend modes on a collapsed transformations composition, all you have to do is apply an effect to it. And I find something like an expression effect, which isn't gonna change the layer in any way, is quite useful. So something like angle control. And you can see now that I've done that, I get access once again, even though this composition is still collapsed to my blend modes. So I'm gonna choose screen and there you go. So just applying that effect gives me access to my blend modes, which is a really nice little hidden feature.